Hi, I'm Mark Sipp at Crocker Farm Auction. I'm here to discuss some outstanding examples of Clarkson Crowley stoneware from Manhattan that we'll be selling in our March 25th auction. Our March 25th sale will be one of the greatest auctions ever for uh, Clarkson Crowley stoneware in terms of variety and quality. We have a number of examples um, and a variety of price ranges, a variety of forms, and a variety of decorative treatments. Uh, this piece, which is one of the best in the sale, was made by Clarkson Crolius relatively early in his career. It probably dates around 1800, 1805. And somewhere around 1800, he took over his father's pottery. Um, his father was John Crolius, brother of William Crolius. Both were potters. Um, and uh, as his father got on in years, Clarkson having become a well-trained potter, took over um, his, his pottery site uh, near City Hall in Manhattan. And the mark that Clarkson used, for the most part, and I'll illustrate several of his different marks, he used a, a variety of different marks, some of them aren't even illustrated here. Um, but, the, but one of his most common marks, and one of his earliest marks, is a large uh, mark that reads C. Crolius. You can get that on one side. And then on the reverse, Manhattan Wells, New York. Now this mark normally exists on one side only. So we'll say C. Crolius, Manhattan Wells, New York, or C. Crolius Manufacturer, Manhattan Wells, New York, something along those lines. Um, to have variants, uh, parts of the mark impressed on each side is unusual. So this jar is unusual in that sense, in that there's stamping, stamp signatures on both sides. Um, and it has some nice impressed and incised decoration on each side. We have his classic impressed floral motif. You see on a number of his signed and unsigned pieces. And there's a number of unsigned pieces you can find out there with this impressed flower that really allow us to attribute uh, Clarks and Crowley's pieces. But you can see um, fanning out of that is this incised foliate motif. And that's found on both sides, brushed over in cobalt slip. But what makes this jar most interesting, what really puts it over the top, is the impressed eagle designs under each handle. This is only the second Crolius piece we've seen with this impressed eagle design. You can see it's a spread-winged, federal-style eagle. Uh, you know, utilized on a piece that was made roughly 25 years after um, America became a country. So we have that eagle and it's on top of some kind of stylized ground. Um, we can see there's a little cross hatch lines accenting the ground that it's standing on. And that appears under both handles. The first jar that we had ever seen with this design uh, was sold through our auction a few years ago, um, and that was an exciting recent discovery. This example comes out of the Robert Meltzer collection, who was a, a major um, stoneware authority and collector from the good old days back in the 70s up until fairly recently. And we have a number of Crolius and other Manhattan pieces from Meltzer's collection that will be offering this sale. Um, this example is also from Meltzer. Uh, and it's a, it's a nice inkwell, desirable form by any maker. We can see it has another Clarkson Crolius maker's mark um, that he used, which uh, reads C. Crolius Stoneware Manufacturer, Manhattan Wells, New York, within an oval. It's a fairly elaborate maker's mark. Typical inkwell form with a central ink reservoir and three holes for quills and a cobalt highlighted line around the top. It's a desirable form. Another example from the Meltzer collection is this fantastic jug with an incised fish. It's a very important piece. This is one of two pieces of Crolius stoneware that we've seen that bear a Crolius signature and have an incised figural design. So while there are numerous Crolius pieces out there you can find with incised uh, floral motifs, foliate motifs, 
um, impressed floral motifs as, as we saw in the first jar. Um, there's only two that we have ever seen that have incised figural designs. One was a, an incised bird jug that came out of the uh, iconic Kino collection that we sold several years ago. Um, I think back in 2007 or 8. And then the second one is this that has a hand incised fish. Very nicely done fish. The, 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 uh, the tail has kind of a scissor shape with some scalloping along it. Some stylized scales to the body. And what's most detailed about this is the way the eye is done. It's got a nicely done eye um, with a little pupil in the center of it. And the mark on this jug is C. Crowley's Manufacturer, New York, another variant, much smaller than the first jar that we saw. Um, and you can see this jar has this brownish hue to it. You can actually smell molasses coming out of this jug, 200-year-old molasses. So that, no doubt, is what has caused this discoloration of the surface. This jug, also from the Meltzer Collection. Um, bears the mark C. Crolius Bayer Street, New York, in a nice large size font with typical Crolius family style and sizing below. And this is one of only three examples that we have seen bearing his Bayard Street address. Um, Clarks and Crolius around 1815 started selling stoneware out of a shop on Bayard Street. Um, so we had two locations going. Um, whether that was another pottery site or just another retail site, it's, it's unclear. Uh, but there's only a, a very small number of pieces that actually bear this Bayard Street address. So it's an exceptionally rare example. Last but not least, these two nice fruit jars. A very popular Crolius form will be sold in the auction. This example on the left of um, petite size, very delicately thrown. You can see just how thin walled it is. And it bears the impressed fruit named peaches. As well as a Crolius maker's mark on the other side, which reads C. Crolius Manufacturer, Manhattan Wells, New York. Manhattan Wells, of course, referring to the location near um, the local well where citizens drew their water. Um, so we have this small example, and then we also have a much larger example. And examples in this large size are fairly unusual. You usually find them actually in between these two sizes. This one's pretty large, roughly a gallon. Um, and it's dipped in Albany slip. Sometimes you find them dipped in Albany slip. Sometimes you find them salt glazed. This um, appears to have possibly uh, a, a light brown wash um, and then a salt glaze over top. But this example has your classic Albany slip. You can see where it's kissed with a little salt glaze at the base, turning it yellow. And it bears the mark uh, C. Crolius uh, Stoneware Manufacturer, Manhattan Wells, New York. On the shoulder. And then what's interesting about this is it has two fruit names. So whether this was an error piece or something that could be designed to hold different fruits during different times of the year, I'm not sure, but it's the first we've seen with two different fruit names. So we have quinces on one side and pears on the reverse. So these are just some of the Crolius pieces that we'll be selling in this sale. Not only will we, will we be selling a number of great Crolius pieces, we'll be having a, a, a number of other great Manhattan pieces for sale, including pieces by David Morgan, um, Thomas Comerall, and John Remy. Um, we're very excited to have this great offering of early uh, Manhattan stoneware in our sale, and we look forward to seeing you on March 25th.